everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're doing today. So let's get started. Today I have a little art haul that I want to share with you. I didn't do my um, subscri subscription box showdown this month. And to be honest, I was kind of going to skip it because I saw a preview of the sketch box. And you know, 99.9% .9 of all the sketch boxes, I love everything they send. But I saw a little sneak peek on social media and I thought, oh lordy, please don't let that be the box. And it was... <laughs> And everything was neon green and I know that neon green has its place in all the art supplies and eventually all this stuff will come in handy but this month I was like ick <laughs> but I thought since I was doing art supply of a few other things and my palette full box was actually kind of amazing that I hated to skip it completely so I thought I'd combine all the little art stuff that I have collected in addition to the two art boxes. So the sketch box this month was a neon green box that came with a pan pastel and a Copic liner that was green and a, and a Copic liner, a uh, Copic marker that was green and um a Copic Chow, whatever, this marker that's green, and an uh, an Alo marker, I think in greens, <laughs> it might be in, might be gray, those might be gray, that's, I might like the gray, um, yeah, those are gray, um, came with a pencil, I like lots of pencils, but this is a 4H, so, you know, that's going to make light pencil lines, I don't know that, I really like the bold pencils, and see, this would be good for like, I guess, a starting sketch, maybe kind of mapping out where you're putting stuff but it is a very hard pencil and I don't use hard pencils very frequently um, but it's a Faber Castell so it's a good brand I like that got some blending stuff to go with the pan pastels and some paper I have been using the eraser that came in this pack it's a high polymer soft eraser this thing is fantastic for getting pastels and other things off of the white parts of your paper when you get it in the wrong spot. So I've actually been using this eraser a lot and really, really like it. That might have been my favorite item <laughs> in that box. <laughs> but then the palette full box came and I thought, oh, I'll just open it since I am not going to do the little showdown. But this month's palette full box was amazing. So I should have. <laughs> have opened it on camera because now I'm kicking myself. So this one came with a Fabriano watercolor pad. I like the long skinny pads. I use these a lot so that's going to be fantastic. Came with a couple of Sapphire Robert Simmons paint brushes so those are good for making some tighter marks. And then it came with some QOR watercolors. And the QOR watercolors are a different pigment than normal watercolors. And I want to read you their description because it sounds absolutely fascinating. These say, pronounced core, QOR is pronounced core, watercolors feature an advanced archival water-soluble binder, uh, water soluble binder, Aquazol, that supports greater pigment loading than traditional watercolor binders. This allows core watercolors to provide more pigment strength and vivid depth of color in every brush stroke while retaining the best qualities of traditional watercolor. The binder is used within the conservation community for painting restoration and it's more flexible and less, viv less brittle than traditional watercolor binders, offering improved flexibility and adhesion. Um, the vibrant, intense colors flow well, produce incredibly smooth transitions, and stay bright even after they dry. They have an excellent resolubility in water and have great glazing qualities. Um, and this is the mixing palette um, that they've sent. So it's earth colors, which in a mixing palette, say earth kind of toned, that's right up my alley. So it's not like bright red, bright blue. Um, it's more like earthy red, earthy green, earthy blue. So that is right up my alley. So this one. And it comes with its own little mixing palette here in the top of that box. So this palette full packs, I really loved the first box. It was the um, Posca markers. And then that second box was something weird. So that was a dud. And then this third box, total winner. So this one, kind of impressed this month. So this, this one might be one of those. We'll see what next month brings us. But it might be hit and miss every month. Sketchbox is usually a hit every time, but I'm just like, bleh, to the green. <laughs> 
another thing that I got that I really wanted to share with you and let me tell you who this is from is this lovely watercolor palette because I kind of collect ceramic palettes. I like ceramic plates. I like artist made ceramic palettes. I like beautiful unusual things to put paint on to just look at to use as photo props to put in the side of my videos as props so i always am interested in beautiful palettes and stuff and then this one actually came with a set of these handmade watercolors and this is from mash's watercolors and it looks like they make um she makes some lovely watercolor palettes without the watercolors in it and watercolor palettes with her watercolors in it it. and for a handmade product this site with all the different options that they had is like the most lovely Etsy shop that I've seen in a long time look little watercolor pans I kind of want some of those <laughs> um, I have some little antique escargot pots that you can put watercolor in let me grab one of those they're just up here so these are genuine antique French escargot pots that I got as cargo sorry uh, that I got off of I don't know Etsy or eBay or somewhere um, and they're really lovely and that kind of reminds me of these but these have a wider mouth and I really like the size of those but these are some fun <laughs> antique options if you want some little fun paint pots for photo props so this is a really lovely Etsy shop of handmade watercolor and palettes um, that Patty, uh, another YouTuber, shared on her channel. So I'll link this below in the description because this is so lovely. I can't even tell you. It might be the most creative original design that I've seen in a handmade watercolor palette. And kudos to her. She sends, or he sends, I'm not sure if this is a lady or a man. I should look at the, the about page. But they send like a little set of their watercolors to go with it. And it's so creative looking. So yay to that. I love it. Okay, and then I got some Bleed Proof Dr. Phil Martin's uh, Bleed Proof White because in a couple of the videos that we've had on here, I've complained about, you know, color bleeding through the white that I use with stencils. And I'm going to give this a try because somebody left me a comment under one of the videos saying I should try this and the color shouldn't bleed through. So we're going to try that with stencils. Ha ha ha. And somebody else mentioned some Faber-Castell um, brushes. These are India ink brushes and I like the brush tip to do you know my little lines that I go through that then I put the little pearls on and I kind of wanted to try out some other um, brands besides the Japanese pen that I like so much that's super hard to find and get and this might be a little bit different or finer line but these if you get them wet it runs so you can't get that wet if you write on something. These uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens are India ink. So when they dry, they're permanent. So I thought, okay, that'd be nice. to. I might have some somewhere in my pen stash, but I don't remember if I do or not. So I thought I'll get some black ones. Then I actually got a set of 12 colored ones just in case I needed some colored marks in something. I thought that would be fun to try. And then this box. I'm kind of excited about this box. And I did actually not open it look at the kitty cat paper now that's super cute i'm gonna have to save that as a gift wrap holy moly that is so cute so this is that's so cute we're keeping that this is some stencils that i ordered from joggles.com and it was on the recommendation of somebody under one of my videos that said have you seen the Klimt stencils on Joggles? And I'm like, well, no, no, I have not. <laughs> so I, these are bigger than I had kind of wanted. I like the smaller stencils, but I kind of don't even care because they were so cool. Um, so a lot of these are Van Gogh and Klimt inspired stencils so this is the van gogh starry night spiral mask stencil how cool is that this one is just a spiral repeat i just liked it this one is rectangular motif i just liked it i've got some smaller ones that kind of look like that 
this one is mirror mirror and it looked very psychedelic in 1960s to me and i really liked that this one is gustav and emile so it's like a gustav klimt inspired stencil and look at all the yummy pattern that we could pick from out of this i mean i know it's like one big pattern but i could come through and pick out different little areas for everything i wanted to do so love that this one is called cubes um, but that was really pretty and i love this one this is square study mask and I thought that was really cool. Um, so I just thought it would be fun to just get some fun different patterns and stencils to play in. Um, that one's definitely one of my favorite right there. But look how pretty these are. I wish they came in like the smaller size too because I do like doing smaller things also. But what a fun little art haul. I got one more stencil. Here we go. Oh yes. Yeah. So this is a Tim Holtz stencil um, I thought would be fun to use and this is brush mark um, but we kind of do this too with you know a brush mark on something but it's kind of fun to play in different stencils so I've, since I started the YouTube channel I never used stencils before YouTube but since I started the YouTube channel it's a little bit faster way to mark make and move along with your abstract paintings and finish something up in you know uh, one or two sittings and I've just become obsessed with all the fun different stencils and I love just playing and experimenting and so thought it was time for some more fun ones um, and the palette the palette is so beautiful so definitely check that out I'm gonna link everything below the video and then I thought you know you want to make something let's just make something and see what we've got out of a few of these today I thought I'd play with the um, core watercolors and we'll just see what we can make so I'll be right back all right so I've put some of our watercolors out on this yummy palette and I thought we could just see what are these colors and I put the first one down on the mixing palette instead of over here where all the colors could go in the little leaf thing so that was dumb <laughs> and that does have a lot of color that sticks in it um oh look at that oh look at that all right oh that's a blue Look at those colors. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is a green. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Oh, my gosh. So, do we make, like, I think I'm going for orange, red, and that yellow. Let's do orange, red, yellow something. We could do blue, green, yellow, or brown. I don't know. I'm feeling, feeling like, let's make some abstracts here. And I've just taped down three pieces of that. 1264 Fabriano 140 pound I do not think this is a cotton paper because it does not say it and if it is they brag about it so I don't think it is and I'm just going to make some little watercolor abstracts on these three pieces of paper and let's just see let's just see how it works and if we like it and I'm just intuitively kind of painting here you know I like to not start in the center so I kind of offset everything which is just kind of a natural way of doing some composition without overthinking it too hard. Um, so that's kind of the way I like to start when I lay down color. Let's see, let's get this yummy yellow and just see you know, if we put that next to each other. The paper is dry. Somebody always asks me if I'm working on wet paper. I do not work on the wet paper to do these. I want the paint to lay where I put it and if the paper's wet, it spreads uncontrollably wherever it wants to go in the lovely manner that watercolor works and so paper's dry and the brush holds a lot of water and the mowers are here so if you hear them with their little mow stuff blowers they're coming closer I can hear them so I might have to put some color down and then we'll let this dry and then we'll mark make on top of it but I want to get this color down real quick that had some blue in it accidentally <laughs> that's very interesting actually oh my goodness okay and here they are so let me let me let these dry and I'll be back okay the mowers have moved further away and these have dried and now that I did that I think this one with the blue and it's gonna be like my favorite <laughs> but I thought let's just try this with this clumped stencil this one is the which one is this one this one 
is the Gustav and Emil Emily. Gustav and Emily 75012. And I like the little swirly things and the funny things. And I thought we would just try this with the bleed proof white since we got it. And I'm going to use it just like an acrylic paint, really. Just stick my sponge on it and go and see what we can get and just cover up some of our lovely yummy watercolor. And we'll just see how we like it in whatever way that we usually use a stencil. And I usually kind of rub it with, since I'm using a dry stencil, uh, dry paint and dry sponge I'm usually rubbing it but you can dab it you could use whatever favorite stencil technique you have but I just want to see like what what's this going to do for us are we going to love it and I've applied it a little bit thin but that's okay um this stuff is very very thick in here and I don't know if I should maybe have a white white a wet I'm looking at the color maybe have a wet sponge but we're gonna we're gonna use it the way I normally use it I'm actually gonna go ahead and try to cover the whole square here and just see what shines through when we're done all right let's see so it's it's not completely like the thickest of white that I've put on I've just done a real thin layer let's just see what it does <gasps> Look how pretty that is. <laughs> That's actually super delightful. Kind of want to do this one over here now. Oh, super delightful. And I do like that it is not letting the color bleed. I mean, it's not, it's still transparent, but it's not like turning the white a different color. Several things I've done, the white has just completely changed colors and turned into, you know, a gray or a greenish gray or some other weird color. But I like that this is not, it's staying like a true white. All right, I don't have it on the, all the way to the edge, but that's okay. Look how fun that is. Look at that. Super fun. This would be a good one to say, like, doing some cut up pieces or you can come back on top of here with other art mediums but it was kind of fun to start just laying down different layers here and seeing what we can get in some different layers all right so I would say definitely a win for the white compared to the acrylic white and this stencil is so big that all the pieces are kind of free floating. So you do got to be careful with that. Okay, good to know. But yeah, I like that the color is not bleeding through. It's still a pretty white white. All right, let's just see what we got. <laughs> These are so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this paint is so pretty and I don't know that I like that I left that corner off and then I'm just gonna put this down in my water like I always do and let that kind of be doing its thing and then just decide do I need anything else on top of this or do we want to say that is delightful for today because that is pretty delightful I liked how those worked I could do marks on top of this I could do gold on top of this oh I could do pastels on top of this I mean so many choices I'm just kind of giving you some options here we could do some post pen um, kind of liking it like I got it though so let's just let's just peel these and take a look these would be really pretty backgrounds these would be really pretty for, oh, look at that. And it was fun to give these core watercolors a test because I actually really liked them. And this Fabriano paper is not sticking to the tape and pulling. So I do like this paper actually quite a bit for not tearing with the tape. Um, so then if you use tape again, it's nice clean tape to be able to just kind of tape up to the wall until you need it again. Oh, look how pretty those are. For something <laughs> that we didn't do like a whole lot of extra mark making, those are actually really lovely. And this one with the blue in it totally came out as my favorite. 
um, and that one super pretty so I love the Klimt stencil like look at how pretty the design is that come out of that I wish it came in a smaller size too or some of these kind of separated but it does really inspire me to get back out my Klimt book and maybe cut some of my own stencils out of Upo paper with some of the Klimt patterns and designs that I can see in his paintings but how cool is that so I hope you enjoyed our little art haul today and just kind of getting a little look at what some of these art supplies do and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.